Primary colors are those which are pure and cannot be created by mixing any other colors. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. The secondary colors are orange, green, and violet. Secondary colors are created by mixing two of the primary colors together. Red and yellow make orange, red and blue make violet, and blue and yellow make green. Clean off the tip of the nozzle and then point it away from yourself. This way, if it squirts in an unpredictable manner, it'll squirt on the wall instead of you. Then, give a slow, steady squeeze. Make sure you have a primary and secondary color chart and a round and flat brush of the proper size. You should also have a palette with yellow and red paint, a paper towel, and a water cup. Paint the perimeter of the top square with yellow using the round brush. Remember to keep a nice, neat edge. Also remember to always pull the brush towards your hand. Do not push the brush. For the second square, you're going to add a little red to the yellow and make it a little more orange, but the color will still remain a little bit on the yellow side. Remember, even though I'm not completing the squares for this demonstration, you need to paint in the squares nice and neat and completely for your particular project. Keep adding more red to the yellow with each square that you paint as you move on down the column. The middle square should wind up being a good medium orange. Remember, do not use orange paint. You need to create this orange by mixing red and yellow. When you move past the middle square, the color should start to take on more of a reddish tone and less of a yellow one. Your last square will then be painted pure red. Notice how the first column that we painted starts out with pure yellow. As we move on down the column, it becomes orange in the middle and then pure red in the very last square. Your finished work should look like the wall example. Next, we're going to blend the two colors together. With the flat brush, paint all the way down the column till you have about three quarters of an inch left at the bottom of the column. This gets tricky because you want to be neat, but also be fairly quick. You don't want to be so fast that you're being sloppy, but you don't want to be so slow that the paint winds up drying and you're not able to blend the yellow and the red paints together. Next, take the darker primary color, which is red in this case, and start to paint upwards and blend the two primary colors together. Keep in mind that red is the dominant color here, and a little bit of red can start to overpower the yellow and could uh, completely take over the yellow column. In order to keep this from happening, you'll probably need to keep adding yellow paint to your brush as you move up the column. The one thing that the video isn't able to show you is how much pressure I am applying with the brush. This is something that you are just going to have to get used to and get a feel for. Sometimes you'll want to apply a lot of pressure with the brush and other times you're going to want to barely skim the surface. Just keep moving up the column and making the adjustments that you need as necessary. If you reach the top of the column and it has become too red, you may need to turn the chart around and start painting with yellow in the opposite direction. You'll want to have a continuous, gradual flow where your column goes from yellow to red smoothly and gradually, like uh, the column that uh, is shown here. Also notice the orange tones that are created in the middle by blending the two colors together. When you're done with the yellow and red column, you can skip the middle column and move on to the yellow to blue column so that the colors don't blend together, just like you did in the last chart. Try to make your chart look as much like the wall example as possible. 